Welcome back to the second continuing part of the last discussion that we are having on social systems and organizational culture. In the last session, we discussed about the social system psychological contract and um, role status within the organization and in this discussion, we will continue with the organizational culture. Now, what is organizational culture? Organizational culture is a set of values, norms that the people share within the organization and which organization it is also a set of values, norms that the organization develops for itself based on what it wants to do, where it wants to go, or what are its future planning and everything. So, the culture of the organ developed by the organization itself is called the organizational culture. It is, a, it is a set of norms, collection of values shared by the people and groups in the organization and um, it, it uh, tells like how the people within the organization both as individually and as a group interact with each other and with the system of the organization as a whole and also how the organization in vice versa will interact with the people and the groups and with the larger environment. Based on this like again this organizational culture can be classified into two types whether there is a strong culture and whether there is a weak culture. Now, when it is it's a strong culture, when the organization's culture is very strong, it is very well defined norms, values, expectations are there and people align their own values with the value of the organization for the purpose of the better organizational performance, then it is called a strong organizational culture. But when the organization itself does not have a very well mentioned, well defined norms and values, well stated values, then what happens? The each of these subgroups as we know like organization is there are different cultural identities, the each of their these subgroups have their own cultures, their own ways of looking into things which may be sometimes aligned with the organization's purposes, sometimes may not be aligned with the organization's purposes and may lead to conflicting situations. So, the, these type of situation, this type of culture is called a weak culture where the organization itself does not have any predefined culture predefined norms uh, values of its own and all the subsystems within the organization has, has their expression of their own cultures and they try to do things in the way they feel it to be done based on their cultural identity. So, and there is little alignment of the organization culture and values and um, control um, is mainly exercised through like um, procedural and bureaucracy control. So, what are the like if we are to develop a strong organizational culture, what are the factors that lead to strong organizational culture, how a strong organizational culture develops is a major point of concern and for that what is majorly required is of course, we have we have divided these factors into certain groups. The major fact contributing factor is of course, a good communication and um, the, the types of communication that contributes in creating um, organizational culture are first if you can see it is um, uh, metaphors such as comparing the organization with the machine or to the family and um, drawing analogy from each other helps in knowing the employee's shared feelings and experiences of the organization. Um, stories about how to do interesting stories about what to do, what not to do, uh, how the leaders did, how what they perceived about the organization, these are also helpful in communicating and transmitting the values of the organization to the employees. Rites and ceremonies, these are certain like it is a combination of stories, 
symbols and metaphors into one like these are certain rituals done in the organization like rites of passages where employees move into new roles like right of upgradation or de enhancement or degradation or um, um, rights of like um, renewal like improving existing cultures and rights of integration or conflict reduction where it is a feeling of membership is generated within the organization it is a feeling of membership. So, these are different uh, rights uh, performed rituals performed on the part of the organization and this may help to communicate like what the organization expects of its employees. Other, um, other important things are of course, your like um, comments reflexive comments that we call and these are like the comments could be in the form of plans like what you want to do in future, your comments about what you did things earlier and um, um, account of those things what you did and commentaries like how, how you are doing thing in the present and f fantasy also like um, thinking creatively maybe and trying to explain like you trying to just telling about your thoughts like how you want to see things in uh, future and re it reflects the um, it is a creative interpretation of the values and goals of the organization. Next important thing is of course, the schema the it is it is the knowledge structure that the person forms about the organization uh, based on the past experiences and it helps to interact with the new situation in a more efficient way. So, the schema is formed the idea the basic knowledge is formed through interaction with other people and communication majorly plays a part over here. The, there are few important schemas listed and first is of course, the self in the organization where it is a person's idea of themselves within the organization like the what what are the personality patterns, what, what are the roles required, what is the behavior expected of them. This is self in organization schemata. Next we come to person in organization schemata where um, it, it is an expectations of the its person's memories, impressions and expectation of other individuals present within the organization. So, self in organization schemata is the schemata about oneself, person in organization schemata is the pers person's schemata about others present in the organization. Um, organization schemata is the third schemata which is present and it is um, a general expectation about um, all others as a whole present in the organization. So, it is a it is a per subset of the person schemata, it is a generalized expectation of all others present in the organization. Then concept in organization schemata, um, this is the individual's knowledge about the organizational aspects, all other organizational aspects other than the other people means um, what is the structure like, what um, what is the design of the organization, what are the organization rules and regulations. The person's knowledge or preconceived knowledge about these things are called organization schemata. Event in organization schemata is a person's knowledge of social events within the organization, what are the social events taking place in the organization. Next after that we come to the elements of culture means certain things which which can be used to describe or influence organizational culture are called the elements of organizational culture. So, the first of the element is paradigm where the organization it tells about what the organization is and what it does, what are the mission, vision etcetera that has been informed like uh, to the um, people. 
So, this is the paradigm. Next is control system, the processes in place to monitor what is going on. So, um, when you are talking of um, like um, role culture, then there will be major rule books to define more specifically the different expectations from that particular role. Then in a power culture, it is based on because it is based on power of the few knowledgeable few, then it is based on the person's reliance on uh, individualism. Next the other elements are reporting lines, hierarchies and the way which work flows through in the business. Next is when you are talking of power structure, then more important is who makes the decision, how widely spread is the power like and what is the um, what is the power, what is the source of that power. These are the major concerns of the power structure. Next important elements are of course, um, symbols which includes organizational logos and designs um, and it is also a representation of the um, power in the organization like sparking spaces and all these things. Um, rituals and routines, sometimes certain meetings are done only because it is a routine job. So, these management of meetings, board meet reports etcetera because it, to, in certain cases this becomes very like routine sort of things. Stories and myths is built up about people and events and convey a message about what is valued in the organization. This is very important, storytelling is very important for the organization and now there is a whole gamut of research going on, on storytelling in organization how to make people understand what is the expectation of the organization from these employees, how the organization get to know what are the employees expectation from the organization as we are discussing in psychological contract, because everything cannot be well defined if you are in forms and it is a very complex form. So, storytelling is in organization giving examples through which if which will explain facts, which will tell about the expectations, what will happen if you meet the expectation, what will happen if you do not meet the expectations, all these are covered under the heading of storytelling in organization and this is a new field of research, very interesting field of research, because it helps us to understand the complex complexity in the interaction, the complex factors which interact with each other to for the better performance of the organization. Next, when you are coming to the typologies of organizational culture means the different types of organizational culture present. So, there, there, there is a whole lot of classification uh, done, um, classification done by different authors based on different perspectives, uh, different people have suggested what is an organizational culture and what are the def your like divisions of is based on their certain you know, research ideas. Here we will try to consider some like we, we like we can uh, start with Hofstede which, which is dependent on the national culture um, classification um, that is your how the culture of the nation and um, based on uh, his study of national influences and he gave five dimensions of culture that is the power distance and um, power distance uncertainty avoidance, individual versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, long versus short term orientation. So, these what happens the, these are mainly in important, these type of classification is mainly important for the organization to know the national culture of that particular nation where, where it is functioning. So, that it will, you can work to find out whether your organizational culture is a proper match 
with that organizational culture, whether it is uh, with the national culture and whether your culture is reflecting to certain extent the um, is, is in is in like it is reflecting and is in alignment with the um, national culture whether whether it can fit it whether you can fit it to that um, culture or not. When we are talking of the next classification which is the Dill and Kennedy classification given by Dill and Kennedy what they try to do is they try to classify organizational culture based on two things what is the nature of the feedback whether it is very instant in nature or not and whether whether there is a risk factor involved in the other degrees of uncertainties in the organizational functioning activities and they classified organizational culture based on these two parameters into two four different types like the tough guy culture the tough guy macho culture then where the feedback is quick and the rewards are high whether there is work hard play hard culture that is few risks to be taken and all with rapid feedback then um, it is it is this type of organization is full of jargon and buzzwords next is bet your company culture where um, big decisions are taken but majority major decisions the results are not known before its years and process culture where there is little or no feedback so see even what happens like each of these um, each of these cultures um, may have its positives and uh, negatives but it so happens like each culture may suit a specific type of um, organization um, and like some and it may produce good um, result like in public service organization and all these things. So, these type of organization culture may be suitable for those type of organizations. According to uh, Handy, there are four types of organizational culture present like the power culture, role culture, task culture and uh, person culture. If you see it, this is based on the concentration, the center of concentration of um, power and in that case if you find like in power culture it is concentrated on very few people um, and a small group and a control is um, control is radiated from center. When you are talking of role culture then people have highly defined roles and delegated authorities and with there is a defined structure and the um, power is there set you know, concentration of power is on the role because the more well defined role it is the better the expectations can be met and the people can perform in a better way. When you are talking of task culture then for teams are formed to solve particular problems and power derives from the expertise of the um, team members. So, um, the, it, it represents like it, it also represents the matrix structure of the organization. A person culture exists when all, where all individuals believe um, themselves uh, a personal culture where individuals believe that they are superior to the organization which is sometimes um, yeah, sometimes which is um, not good for the organization because the individual's purpose is given more importance individual's goal is given more importance than the organization's goal and <coughs> survival of the organization comes to be difficult shine gave a like a iceberg type of model 
uh, for the organization where it, it, it tells about like mm, the different layers of the organization, layers which are visible, mm, layers which are not visible and the uppermost layer which is visible like for the organization, for the people from outside to come and know like what is an organizational culture is called the artifacts present in the organization which is um, observed through the status symbols present, the facilities present, its furnishing, rewards, recognition, certain visible facts, certain which tells about like visible, which shows how people interact with each other, how the people are dressing, these facts visible interaction slogans, mission statements, all these things tells us about the um, wh what is the nature of the organization, what is the culture of the organization. These are called artifacts means things present in the upper just visible upper layer and people try to guess about the culture by noticing all these factors. Next level is of course the organization's values which you cannot observe directly by noticing facts thing, by noticing the environment physical environment of the organization uh, but wh what you can discover by interviewing people through uh, questionnaires by asking them questions about what are your values, what, what do you profess, uh, what you want to do, how you see yourself, how you perceive yourself, what you want to be in future, all these sorts of questions help to understand the next layer um, below the artifact, the next layer which is called the values of the organization and the next, the deepest layer of the iceberg is of course the called the tacit assumptions and these are uh, um, unseen part. This is not discovered in everyday cognitive interactions with the organizational members. Then these are called unspoken rules, tacit assumptions, unspoken rules um, um, and sometimes the, these are not to be discussed sort of facts not to be openly discussed sort of facts about the organization and so these are not cognitively identified also in day to day interaction because sometimes there is a taboo in discussing all these factors. So, tacit assumptions are very important important parts of the if you can understand like if there there is a alignment of the tacit assumption and the organization values um, then uh, then there will be a, a strong culture because what what i believe in that is what i practice or what i tell others to do otherwise there will be a difference between what i believe in and what i just tell about myself what I like show to the world like I am this type of organization. If there is a gap between the tacit assumption and values then it the, your maybe artifacts will speak about certain culture, but when it comes to like you sensing you having a feel of the culture in the workplace it may give you a different non-verbal cue. So, nonverbal communication, so if that gap is there, then it may lead to a weak culture. Karmezi, um, Arthur Karmezi, he tried to um, classify organization based on uh, different um, categories. Now, first is of course, the blame culture. Where, where people try to blame each other, people try to blame each other and it cal cultivates distrust and uh, fear um, because and it leads to nowhere because it, it is no, no new idea is generated, 
no new personal initiative is taken because people do not want to take risk over here. So, what happens because they do not want to be blamed for the efforts that they have taken. Multidirectional culture is this culture cultivates minimized cross department communication and cooperation. So, if this happens, then what happens? Each department is critical of the other department, and the, there is there is a lack of alignment between the input of one per one department and the output of the other department. So, if if that is no link in the in the, in the system in the in the fact like one department may act in contra with the purpose of the other department, then sometimes it may lead to organizational inefficiency. In leave and let leave culture, then it, it mentions a sort of stagnation, it mentions a sort of stagnation and lack of creativity. I will go in the way that I am like, I, the organization is is not in a position or does not want to, does not like to uh, interpret the signals sent by the environment and they do not want to grow. And there is an average degree of cooperation and communication, but for the urge for growth is not there. People have developed their personal relationships and decided like to um, what decided not to like you know, more more contribute to the organization because the people here here have little future vision and they have lost their passion so that this is sort of okay just spend the day and there is a stagnation as a whole bright congruent culture is a sort of culture where people identify with the brand name and they they have a they are passionate about the uh, brand and they want to identify with the uh, organizational goal then they use personal resources to solve organizational problems and uh, they take interest in the organizational happenings and majorly this culture exists in the like level of groups. Leadership enriched culture, then leadership is the major factor which, which is enriching the culture. People are cooperating with each other, the leader is able to motivate the employees to perform according to the organizational goal. But what is the major motto over here? is that leaders are developing not leader uh, followers, but they are developing leaders who can uh, just uh, take up the baton from them and function in the similar way. So, um, leadership enriched culture is very important for the growth of the organization. Next, when we move into the how to measure organizational culture, one of the culture measures is by Cook, in which we find there are three, this is called organizational culture inventory, um, which measures 12 behavioral norms and it is grouped into three types of cultures like which is called um, constructive culture, passive defensive culture and aggressive defensive culture. In constructive culture what happens? People are motivated, people are encouraged to meet their higher order satisfaction needs and these needs are that of achievement, self actualization, then affiliative needs, humanistic needs. Passive defensive cultures are which may members believe that they, they must interact with others in such way that is not going to threaten their own security. Then these are 
like conventional approval dependent and avoidance type of cultures mm, these uh, these are they, the third is the aggressive type of culture in which members like approach the task in forceful ways to protect their own security and these are called oppositional cultures, uh, competitive cultures. So, and your perfectionist cultures, these are either they want to defend the organ, organizational members want to defend their own status and security through these aggressive defensive cultures. So, what happens is this if you can observe like um, constructive culture, passive defensive culture and aggressive defensive cultures, these may, this may have an effect on the organization's um, performance. Um, and the, this is the as the uh, if you can notice like these are uh, different viewpoints, these are different viewpoints through which uh, employees are, per, this, this is a certain belief system by which like they are trying to approach a problem, they are trying to solve certain issues, definitely it, these different types of cultures are going to have effects on the decisions made by the organization and the performance of the organization. and also the satisfaction of the employees within the particular organization, how they interact with each other and what they, what is the outcome of those interactions. Entrepreneurial culture is a system of shared values, beliefs and norms of an, members of an organization where creativity is valued, then tolerance of creative people is there, you know, innovation is um, uh, given importance and all these things um, like um, uh, dealing with the market situations, dealing with the uncertainties in the market and competitors threats and expecting original members to behave um, accordingly like wh wh what are the elements, elements are like people are more empowered to do things, value creation is through creativity, Ve attention to the basic factors are there, then um, there is a freedom, this, uh, as you can see like freedom to grow and fail is a major like f defining, maybe the defining part of this culture and um, emphasis on the future. So, these, these are the very key points beyond like commitment and personal responsibility, all these things, all these things are important, but freedom to grow and fail is one of the important issues in the entrepreneurial culture. Next like when you are talking, if you, if you when you are discussing organizational culture, like culture needs to be transmitted from one employee to the other employer one from one group to the other group and the, the process which is responsible for it, it is called the organizational um, socialization uh, process and it, it has uh, three stages. Oh, first one is the stage of pre-arrival stage and next is the encounter stage and third is the metamorphosis stage. So, organization, if you see the pre-arrival stage is a stage, it is a period of learning in the socialization process that occurs before a new employee joins the organization. Now, how this happens, like if you want to see like the original socialization starts only after the employee joins the organization, then maybe it is not the correct approach to look into the process of organizational socializing, because socializing this learning starts from the employee side also before that employee joins the organization through different searches made by that employee for about the organization. 
to find out to find out whether there is alignment between the purpose and the goal of the employee with that of the organization and if that is there it provides a good feeling and provides a platform for the individual to accept the values norms of the organization after he joins the organization in reality encounter stage is the stage in the socialization process in which a new employee sees what the um, what the organization is really like and so you you may have in the pre arrival stage uh, many like very uh, flowery ideas about the organization very over or many over expectations about the organization but when you come and join the organization you find like sometimes expectations are um, not matching because then this is what is reality and what was projected as reality there is a gap between these two things metamorphosis stage is a stage in the socialization process in which a new employee changes and adjusts to the uh, work work group and organization so this is a very crucial stage in the socialization process like when there is a um, strong culture in the organization and the employee due to various reasons wants to stay within the organization then that person has to change um, change uh, accept adapt to um, certain things certain values of the um, organization and sometimes there could be a conflict between the personal values and the um, organizational values as expressed and then this person has to um, balance between these two things like what to give to priority to the personal values that the person has cherished for life or the um, organizational values and then he has to decide for himself like what he is going to do based on these um, stages like there are different socialization options like whether it is a formal or informal in nature like whether you do it formally from the organization or you do it informally individual versus collective do you give the socialization individually one one each individual or give you socially or you give it in a like collective way like you bring in, give socialization in a group situation exercises vary the problems given for socialization vary so it it depends on the organization's policies how it is being tackled fixed versus variable whether there is a predefined fixed procedure of socialization on the part of the organization or you vary it based on your needs and years and maybe uh, in order to experiment so these are different factors or, or the elements of socialization whether it is given in a random order or whether it is given serially that is also another concern another major concern is what you want employees to do or what is your idea with the employees like if you want them to shed away their personal values uh, their personal likes dislikes and preferences of life and want to get it um, al aligned and want to learn want to function the way organization wants you to function the more get aligned with the um, organization values then the process of socialization could be um, divested your means i make you get rid of your personal inhibitions personal values and beliefs and all these things and make you learn the organization's way of speaking and doing things but if it is invested your then what happens i i, I like to 
move forward, I, I give importance to you as a person and see at the growth and development of you as a person and your val your values are important to me and I want or, or I rather help you to nurture those values in the organization that process is called investiture. Effective socialization like when you have done your socialization then how do you know like whether you have done an effective socialization or not. It depends on like what feedback do you get um, de um, based on what are the things that you learn in socialization. Um, feedback regarding like what is the what was the content, what, what was expected of you to do. So, feedback regarding those things are very important and these four, um, there are four like categories to it. One is the, you know, first is the organizational values, what was it? what was the goal, what was the culture, what was clearly defined or not. Next is work group values, norms and friendships, then whether it is defined like how to do the job, what are the needed skills and knowledge for it and what are the personal change relating to that identity, selves and motives, self image and motives. These are the four content categories like and you have to get the feedback regarding each of these content categories like what was imparted to the newcomer as a part of this socialization process and what were the expectations from them. Building on previous studies in socialization, um, the, you find the, there, there are certain um, things which tells like effectiveness and socialization will if you try to evaluate it you will find like whether there is a people have developed a task mastery then know, whether they have accepted a knowledge have developed about the organizational culture and whether there is a role clarity then then whether they are going for some personal learning about the organization and the job they are they are having to they are supposed to do and whether they are functioning within the work group all these factors like mentioned defines the if socialization effectiveness means whether you have mastered your task properly what degree of it is required then whether you have accepted organization's culture will again define the strong culture and weak culture, what is the personal learning occurring from these things, whether the role clarity is been developed or not will define the effectiveness of the socialization process. Creating now in this whole thing, in the whole exercise of organizational socialization, organizational culture, ways of defining culture, one thing is very important is creating an ethical organizational culture. So, it is very important to take a review of the organizational processes which are their management practices which are there for developing uh, our culture and give socialization processes etc. Uh, and you have to find out whether the management practices are um, uh, management practices are promoting ethical ways of doing things and some of these management practices are having a um, whether it is functioning as a role model, whether you are uh, telling what are the ethical expectations uh, from the employees, whether you are in telling, whether you are giving a, a tr training on how to be ethical or not. 
then whether you are rewarding ethical acts and punishing unethical ones and providing protective mechanism. Um, this is very important from the viewpoint of whistleblowers like um, sometimes people out of fear do not um, report, do not um, report any unethical practices and behaviors that they may have noticed within the organization because they may feel certain threat and providing pro protective mechanism helps to like make give that person a certain ease like okay what the organization believes in most is the ethical situation the rightness or the wrongness of the action and even if I tell about some of the practices which are going the wrong way in the organization then I do not run the risk of any loss. So, that providing a protective mechanism is very important for people to open up their minds and speak the truth about the practices going on within the organization. Next is one other important way of looking into culture is creating a customer responsive culture how it can be done is um, dependent on the types of employees hired by the organization then there is a low degree of formalization means like um, or that there is a freedom to um, meet customer service requirements then empowering employees with the decision making and discretion to please the customer, then good listening skill on the part of the employees, then role clarity so that they can act as boundary spanners and get to read the environment, scan the environment, and then employees need to engage in OCB. Mm, or PM means they love the organization and can go some miles extra for the better functioning of the organization. But if you see again, maybe it's very ingrained in this whole concept is to is the concept of ethics is in order to be customer responsive, in order to develop a customer responsive culture like what is what is the degree of importance that we give to a ethical culture because sometimes in order to be customer responsive people may take wrong practices to like um, meet the requirements of the customers so in those senses like Ethics, ethics is very intertwined. The concept of ethics is very intertwined with this concept of cust the customer response. When you are creating a customer responsive culture, the process you do it like it's very important. So the ethical practices, along while doing the customer responsive behavior, is very important, and we just cannot ignore this part. What are the related managerial actions required is selection of new employees with personality and attitude consistent with high service orientation, train and socialize current employees to be more customer focused, change organizational structure to give employees more control empower employees to make decisions about their jobs, conduct performance appraisals based on customer focused um, employee behaviors, provide ongoing recognition for employees who make special efforts to please customers. Um, now, con pr provide ongoing recognition for employees who make special efforts to please customers. Again, and at this point we have to take into consideration like what degree of effort uh, should be rewarded should what what is the domain the purview in 
where it falls like what special what degree of special effort that the person and the employees take to please the customer like what what is important to um, get the business what what is the ultimate focus of the organization like to get the business anyhow or um, the way that you take to get the business so somewhere uh, decisional dilemmas will come and focus on ethics will help to solve these dilemmas spirituality in organizational culture like workplace spirituality is mm, mm, workplace spirituality is uh, defined by um, it, it, it's a recognition given um, that the uh, recognition of the uh, organization of the fact that employees have their own inner life and their own value system and uh, higher purpose of life meaningful that they want to get a meaningful work they want to have a feeling of joy from the organization by working in it and this this can be if a, if an organization provides this to the takes care of these human responses and provides this for the employees then it helps to nurture uh, spirituality now no, no, what of like a caution over here like people may mix up may try to mistake uh, like religiosity and uh, spirituality these two are not the similar terms um, spirituality is the higher values nurtured by people the ways of looking into life aspects of life your vision about your own life and what you want to do and it is not the same as um, religiosity religiosity is the mere religious practices that we do but when it comes to the faith the belief the higher nature of values maybe all the religions agree to some common values and spirituality tries to st- discuss about those values and not the religious practices which may vary from religion to religion so while nurturing spirituality and organizational culture so certain characteristics of course are a strong sense of purpose like what you want to do what you want to be like then focus on individual development is very important trust and openness like unconditional love and trust for the employees is very important employee empowerment is important because i respect you because i trust you i am empowering you that is one of the like um, one of the very important things of a spiritual workplace then toleration of employee expression like employees may be given a freedom to express their own mind and the organization and culture should be organization as a whole should be very tolerant to uh, uh, like accepting with a open mind what the employees are expressing so tolerance trust and empowerment love these empathy these are very important points important factors of spirituality developing spirituality and maintaining spirituality in the organization nurturing spirituality in the organization when we are talking of organizational culture and change then we get to know like changing of organizational culture is sometimes necessary why is sometimes necessary while you are trying to make a change in your uh, business or you are making a making a shift in all these things so what is required is formulating a vision strategic vision like what you want to do and Mm, display uh, because culture mainly talks of organization vision it should be top driven the top people should start believing in it and working on it and be committed to the goal of changing the culture then it should be this exercise should be done at the highest level in the organization and 
mm, your mm, the organization should support the changes required and what happens after the organization changes you have to socialize the newcomers on the on the new cultural setup on the new culture and then you have to terminate the deviants and develop ethical and legal sensitivity so these are major concerns when there are organizational culture and change these are major issues in situations where mergers acquisitions things happen and different cultures come together then as some culture you accept the major culture minor culture and then you develop a, the new company with a new face develops a new culture of its own which could be a reflection of a mix of both the cultures or you find one culture getting a major representation other culture is not getting so much of representation whatever is the situations the people who are left behind in the organization and who whom you do not terminate or whom who do not part from your organization they have to be socialized again to this uh, new system in the organization to this new culture so that they can accept those cultures and they can feel they feel comfortable within that cultural setup and try to work with the organization in uh, cultural innovation then includes like recognizing past cultural differences and setting expectations for change then changing the culture by replacing the old culture and so it's a very important task to review whether your culture is still functioning whether it's effective whether it's leading to performance or not having a culture and sitting like complacent is not going to help you in reality the constant check constant monitoring is required whether this culture is well uh, it's very timely whether it is uh, required at the present way of functioning present business that we are doing whether our culture is facilitating that or not and maintaining culture includes like integrating the cal new culture into the work of integration and learning is very important where there is a if there is a difference between the old culture and the new culture integrating and reducing the difference gap is very important and um, like establishing the new culture like um, affirming it and keeping the new culture in space like in getting it ingrained the getting the new culture ingrained also is very important for cultural innovation and it if this can be done this will lead to better performance for the organization questions following it uh, like define organizational culture critically evaluate the different typologies define a social system how the psychological contract affects the social system what is cultural diversity explain its suitable examples the relationship between cultural identity diversity and work group functioning what is role and role perception describe, describe a systematic framework for organizational role highlighting the effect of role conflict and role ambiguity on organizational performance what are status symbols what is the significance of status what is organizational socialization state the differences pers different perspectives on organizational socialization what is the role of learning in organizational socialization it's very important to know the role of learning in the socialization process critically evaluate the role of individual in the organizational socialization process so and state if it it's possible to change culture if yes then how so these questions are some complex questions given where you have to apply your thought process maybe you have to move back and forth between the, all the three chapters that you have learned to find answers to these questions there is no straightforward answer you have to think and just draw your examples from the real life practices done in the for the companies and try to relate it with these things and try to find out give reflective answers to these questions and if you can do it then you can understand like the importance of um, organization as a social system and more so the role of culture for the performance of the organization thank you